Can you guys explain? Can you guys explain what's going on with Burt Kreischer? Like, <clears throat> I don't know what to make of it. I'm really confused. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know if this is like standard Burt Kreischer behavior. Is he being more desperate than usual? Um, or am I just noticing it more now because I'm paying attention to his content? But I saw this recently on his Twitter and I'm like, why are you doing this? To promote what? More dates for your for your show. Like, what is this? Like, why are you doing this? Like, honestly, why? Just tell me why. Why? Let's play the video. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Burt Kreischer, The Machine. And I'm excited to announce my OnlyFans page. I'll be doing OnlyFans because I stand in solidarity with my fellow actors during this SAG strike. I will not be promoting a movie, Wait, nor will on. I be act- Wait a minute, the strike is over. The SAG strike's over? Yeah. Oh, you have no idea how excited that makes me because I've been wanting to promote my movie, The Machine, streaming right now on Netflix. It trended at number one worldwide for almost a month and I want all of you to see it. So run to Netflix. Watch my movie, The Machine, with Mark Hamill, or... Like, what is this? Like, what is this? Like, how is this in any way going to entice anyone to watch your movie that's already shit and stinks? It's not like they're not giving it a chance because they don't think it's a good movie. They think it's a shit movie. The reviews, you know tell them it's a shit movie the box office tells them it's a shit movie the fact that it's on netflix means that most likely it's a shit movie and then you think a great way to promote a shit movie is to get stalkers and do this like skit thing that you think is funny with a cowboy hat over your over your winky or whatever you're doing as a way to promote your special so essentially you're standing in front of us with a boner that's what he's trying to intimate obviously it's not it's probably some trick whatever i don't know some editing, some little thing he's holding. Who cares what it is? But how is this going to make me... Why would I watch your movie because of this? Why? Exactly, Koyla. His daughter's daughter fighting for her life. They just got to college recently. I, I think so, if I'm not mistaken. They're just at that age now where they're either in college or they just started. So can you imagine what they're going through now in real time? Yes, they go to a great college because their dad's career can afford them the ability to go to where they want to. But can you imagine what it must be like growing up with a dad like this? I don't get it. I really don't get it. Or watch Razzle Dazzle or Hey Big Boy or Secret Time or my special The Machine. And if you can't catch me on Netflix, catch me on the road. For the this is the... This is the greatest example of overpromotion. There is something that to be said because I remember there's a there's a really good um, Tyler the Creator interview, right? When he's doing a collaboration with Converse, where Tyler the Creator has some very um, interesting and true and poignant words for creators when it comes to sharing work. Because I'm the same. I don't really like apart from publishing the things I publish on my YouTube channel, I don't really promote my channel that much, right? I'm not really, I don't really have clips up on TikTok. I'm not really talking about it all the time when I tweet. You know what I mean, I don't really do much apart from just post on here. And I know a lot of creatives outside of what they do sometimes have an issue with promoting their stuff. Like it feels a bit corny. It feels a bit like try hard. It feels a little bit too desperate. So I remember Tyler Cray making a point during his Converse um little powwow thing he was like oh if you're a creative and you're or especially if you're a musician always promote your stuff not just in a week of you're promoting it like promote it all year round right like, keep pushing people to your music like if you worked hard on it and you're proud of it push it but there is a limit you know and I think the limit is this maybe maybe tweet out are you hey guys my my specials out on Netflix now or my movies out on Netflix please watch it I spent a lot of time on it, you know, hope you enjoy. If you have any feedback, let me know, whatever. You can do that. But surely this video is a bit too much. Like, surely this is too much. Like, what What does this do, really? Because this, ma you know what this makes me do? This makes me not want to watch a movie ever. Like, I, I, I could make, like, a mental note, okay? Never going to watch another movie of yours again. That's, like, my little, like, protest because I've been subjected to this.
the Tops Off World Tour. Next week, Cincinnati, Milwaukee, Nashville, Springfield, then Little Rock. Speaking of Little Rock, <laughs> but that's the thing, though, JC. Yeah, it's he's desperate. That's the thing, though, JC, that makes him more pathetic. He doesn't need to be desperate. As Joe Rogan says, Burt Kreischer is one of the 1,000 comedians. He's in that special glass, glass. He's in that special class of comedians that probably doesn't need to put out anything funny. He's, he's that famous where he could just put out mediocre specials until the day he dies and he's still going to have a, a fan base of people that want to see him. He's still going to have very popular podcasts. Like he's in that kind of group of comedians that have been kind of grandfathered in along with Joe Rogan. Right, he's there's nothing really he can do that will drive his fans away. Really, for the for the for, for the main, you know, overall, so he's not struggling for money. You wouldn't think so, anyway, right? He sells a good amount of tickets. He tours all the time. Like this is something that you that you expect for somebody that is actually desperate, is actually make trying to keep the lights on, trying to make sure their kids' bills are paid. You know what I mean? This is trying to keep the family together. Is that exactly Cloud K20? This doesn't feel like he's desperate. This feels like he just wants attention. This guy is so des like in because I think that beef with um that beef with that comedian from uh, Tuesday with Stories. What's his fucking name? Why well, can't I remember anyone's name today, man? Um, that beef with that guy about the fucking Thai food was for me a really good example of just how much of an attention seeker Bert is. Like, he got annoyed that someone didn't want to eat his Thai food or that, you know, they wanted to have something else to eat. Do you know what I mean? Like, Joe List, exactly. That Joe List beef was a good example of how much of an attention seeker Bert was because the crux of the beef was that he wanted to be the guy that got the thanks and got the high fives and, oh my God, Bert's amazing for bringing everybody back pizza. One person says they don't want to eat pizza and it suddenly sent him on a fucking wobbler. He went completely unhinged, got crazy, started shouting, screaming, had a bit of an argument with that person. They made up after the fact, but I think the fact that he got upset about it is proof of just how much of an attention seeker he is. He wants credit for ordering pizza. You're like, what? Huh? You want credit for buying us? Okay, thank you, I guess. Like, this is so embarrassing, bro. Like, so embarrassing. And the funny thing about this is that Nine times out of ten, if someone does this, more likely than not, their comedy ain't going to be great. And one thing we can say about Burt Kreischer, none of his comedy justifies him looking the way he does. He doesn't really talk about interesting topics. He doesn't really come at them from interesting angles. They're all kind of like hacky, middle-aged dad jokes, isn't it, really? He doesn't really say anything interesting. Like, nothing that Burt does on stage would warrant him looking the way he does. Nothing. There's nothing he does in his material that would make it this make sense. Look at him. Look at him. Imagine this being your dad. Imagine this being your fucking dad. This is your father. I've got a feeling, right? I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling he'll be the kind of dad that'll turn up to his daughter's wedding topless. All the attention's on me, guys. He'll be that kind of dad. He might rip off his shirt at the wedding. At his kid's wedding, he might rip off his shirt and make it all about him. <laughs> He's going to be that guy. He's definitely going to be that guy. Bert fucking Kreischer. Bert fucking Kreischer, man. Honestly. That guy, man. You can't... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway.